Right, so let's look into the configuration of uh, static NAT. So for you to configure static NAT, we are going to do two methods for us to do it. So method number one is that we configure from the interface view. So whichever external interface that you want to do the net, you are going to go into that particular interface. So assuming that this is a uh, gate 000, which is our external interface, which is facing the internet. The first command we are going to use will be NAT static global, okay? Then you are going to specify what is your external IP. Then you use a keyword which is inside and then followed by your internal IP address, which is uh, just now the example is 192.168.1.x. So here we have an uh, explanation global, uh, which is a global address is used to configure an external IP and inside is used to configure the internal private IP address. Now there are two methods as I mentioned. The method number two is you are going to configure on a system view. On system view, you still do the same thing using net static global. Then you are going to specify the global address inside and the host address. It's a similar just like on the interface, except that after the command is configured, you need to specify on the interface. In this case, you are going to specify that this is my external interface. Then you are going to specify net static enable. Okay, so this is a command uh, that you need to enable telling the router which interface is the net interface. All right, so we have two flavor that you can use, either one of them will work. So here we are looking into the uh, example of configuring static NAT. Here in this example, we have a uh, topology. We have three holes here, 1.1, 1.2 and 1.3, which is using private network connecting to a switch and then the switch connect to a router. The router have a gateway of 192.168.1.254 and the router also have a uh, interface which have a IP address as 122.1.2.1 which is connecting to the internet and uh, we have an external web server which is 200.1.2.3 So let's look into the configuration uh, specifically on NAT So on the internal, we do not need to do anything it's only on the external interface, gig 001, which is IP address of 122121. We just need to do this three um, configuration. So the first one is net static global. 122121 is the external or public IP. Then we specify internal or inside is 192.168.1.2 and you repeat it on the external IP address. Now again, this IP address is being assigned to you and this is your internal IP. Okay, all these are internal IP address. So that's all. So just using this three command, you're able to allow the internal to the external using the uh, public IP address. As I mentioned again, uh, these are the public address that is owned by the company and uh, this is one to one. Uh, mapping, you are not saving any IP address here. So to give you an, an idea on how this is being configured, so let me uh, show you the lab. So this is a demo that I pre-configured. So again, this is very similar to what we have on the diagram. Just now we have PC1, 2 and 3, which is 192.168.1.x. Then we have our switch here, uh, which is layer 2. Then we have a uh, gate 00 which IP address is 192.168.1.254. External, we have 122.2.1, connecting to the cloud. In this case, this is the internet. And uh, finally, we have a server here. Okay, so let's us look into the nets here. All right, so this is a newly start router. Currently, there is no configuration. Okay, so I'm going to show you how this is being configured. On the internal, we have the IP address of 192.168.1.254. And in the external, which is gig 001, we have the IP address of 122.1.2.1. So that's it. And uh, let's see if we can ping to the internal. This is a PC number one. And uh, in PC number one, you'll notice that we have 1.1. So I go back to the net here. I do a ping to 192.168.1.1. .1. OK, 
Okay, so let me change this 168. All right, so as you can see that I can able to ping. I can ping to number two, which is PC2, and I also can ping to PC number three. As I mentioned here is that the uh, gateway, we are pointing to 254, okay? So 254 is our uh, uh, NAT routers here. So it's a basic layer two configuration. Then on the net server, we are going to point to our cloud, in this case, our service provider. So since this is a service provider, I'm going to configure our static route. So let me change my router to call as a NAT. I can ping to my service provider 122.1.2.2. .2. So this is dot two interface, which is uh, I'm simulating this as my service provider. You can see that uh, 122.2.1.2.2 .2 is my provider. And I'm going to use a uh, IP uh, static route, IP route static. So I use a default route and I'm pointing to 122.1.2.2. .2. That's it. So now I already point to my service provider and in return I should be able to ping to the internet. So I'm assuming that the server one, which having an IP address of 200.123 is the internet IP address 200.1.2.3. So as you can see that I'm able to ping here and when I do a trace of 200.1.2.3, I'm passing through the service provider before it landed into the server. So basically the cloud behind here is just a router. Now how we can configure static NAT here? So let me go back to PC number one here. So in PC number one, I'm going to do a ping to 200.1.2.3. Remember NAT have not configured yet. So we are going to configure the NAT now. You can see that it's request timeout, right? So we are going to do a configuration. Okay, so I'm going to put in the configuration here. So this is a configuration for the NAT, all right? So let's just configure that. Okay, let me move this. On the NAT server, I'm going to specify the interface of gig 001. So I'm going to go into the interface gig 0 slash 0 slash 1. Remember, I have already have IP here. Then I'm going to use a keyword called NAT static global. Okay, 122.1.2. Now I'm using a one already, so I'm going to use 11. So I'm going to do an inside 192.168.1.1. Okay, you see this, huh? So the command is called net static global 122.1.2.11. So I'm assuming that my outside IP address is 122.1.2.11 and my inside IP is 192.168.1.1. All right, enter and see what happened. Just now I have a timeout, now I can able to ping. And when I try to do a ping, what it does over here is that it will go into my router, then my router will translate it into 122121 and it will send to the comm server. Now if you want to verify this, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run a Wireshark and I'm going to show you how this is working. Okay, so I'm running my Wireshark over here. I'll show how the net here is working. So I do a ping one more time. Okay, and I shift back to Wireshark. All right, so as you can see here, I have 122.1.2.11. Remember that my external IP is 122.1.2.1, .1 and this is my destination. You notice that then, it will actually get a reply back from the server, 20123, reply to 1221211. So this is the NAT in action. So as what I mentioned earlier on on the concept, the source IP address from 192.168.1.1 has been translated to 1221211. So this is where I can able to ping. Now, assuming that I go to PC2, do you think that now I can ping to 
200.1.2.3 it will not write because I still do not have a translation here so let's do the translation and see uh, the ping will take place so I just do an up arrow so what I'm going to do is so instead of 1221211 let's say I'm going to do 1221222 okay and then I'm going to do an inside of 192.168.1.2 enter so this time I'm using 1221222 and I'm going to do a ping now and you can see you can ping already okay so we can able to ping so let's continue to do the next net static global 122.1.2.3 inside is 192.168.1.3 okay so display this so now we have all the setting here so this is how NAT uh, static NAT is being configured